Hi everyone, this is Satyajit. Welcome to my channel Cloud Journey with Satyajit. In our last videos, we discuss in detail about what is the working principle of Transit Gateway and what are the components of Transit Gateway. Okay, and when we create the Transit Gateway, by default, one Transit Gateway routable will be created if we select the default route gateway associations and default route gateway propagations. Okay, and once we create an attachment as a BPC attachment, right? So it automatically the associations will be updated and the propagations will be updated. And we understand in detail about this working flow, like transit gateway have this transit gateway routable default. When we attach as a BPC as an attachment, the side range of the BPC will be added to the transit gateway routable as a associations and propagations. Okay, whatever the BPC are now three BPC, so three details is there. Now, if you attach another BPC, so that details will be there. So to make it easier, so we made 10 0 0 slash 8. We have added under the route table of that EC2 instance. Okay, so that anyone can communicate with each other. Okay, so that is one approach. Second, now we need to understand. Okay, so when we created the transit gateway. Right. So what are the company extra components it's created in between and how that communications will happen. Right. So when we created the transit gateway attachment, okay. If I go to the transit gateway attachment, okay. Let me uh, show you transit gateway attachment. Let's say I'll say uh, VPC test. Okay. I have to select the transit gateway and attachment type is VPC. So here I need to specify the VPC. Okay, let me select this VPC. So now this is the availability zone, right? US is 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1EF. So all are the availability zone and these all are the particular subnet. Okay, so now in this, as this is the default VPC, so in this VPC, each availability zone have one subnet. Okay, so there might be possible, right, in the uh, custom VPC, one one subnet or one availability zone we have multiple subnet okay so let's say us is 1a we can have two subnet or three subnet like that us is 1b we could have two subnet okay but here while we are selecting we can select only one subnet at a time of that availability zone it means like if in us is 1a we have three subnet we cannot attach three subnet in this okay we can select only one subnet then there might be a question if on the other subnet the resources will be there then how they will communicate okay so just like interface endpoint okay bpc interface endpoint we know like uh, will we select it will create an elastic network interface okay here also the same thing okay when we select that every availability zone and the individual subnet on that subnet it is going to create one elastic network interface okay so that other subnet of that availability zone they can communicate via that elastic network interface so we do not have to uh, select all the sub anyway that uh, we cannot select it that options is not available but uh, in us is 1a you have to, we have select one subnet but in us is 1a if we have multiple number of subnet and that multiple number of subnet resources will be there they can communicate via this transit gateway via this eni okay so like that uh, if you if we see now we have created one vpc attachment okay and here if you see i just modified i have selected only one only one availability zone and only one subnet it means it is going to create only one ENI. Okay, we can verify. We can go to the network interface and you can see this ENI. Okay, uh, let me come this side. Okay, so if you see interface is transit gateway and there will be transit gateway attachment will be there. Okay, if you select this one, then you will get to know. Okay, I'm sorry. You need to go to the network interface and just select it. Okay, so that you will get to know which ENI it is. If you see this the ENI, this is the VPC ID. Okay, uh, one minute. This is the ENI, and if you see here the transit gateway, this is the 
if you see here the transit gate attachment description it is created transit gate attachment if you see the attachment ending with 8c7 uh, just verify the attachment ending with 8c7 okay this is the attachment id so for this attachment it created one eni okay so now one interesting questions okay so what will happen now we have selected only us east one it means on this us east one a availability zone if we have 10 number of subnet in that 10 number of subnet all ec2 instances they can easily communicate via this transit gateway if one subnet will be part of us east one b okay does that will communicate no it is not going to communicate because we have to select at least a, each availability zone okay where resources will be present if in us is two, if in northern virginia region one customer they selected all six availability zone and uh, their resources present in all, all these six availability zone then we have to select all, all six availability zone while creating the attachment and we have to specify one subnet once we do so, it is going to create six ENI. Okay, now we have selected one availability zone. So it, it created one ENI. If you are going to select a six availability zone, it is going to create six ENI. Okay, so now these questions can come like while we created the transit gateway, you have selected only one availability zone and you created the attachment, but your resources will be present in other availability zone. Okay, and through transit gateway, they're unable to communicate. So you might be thinking the issue may be on the routing side or somewhere, but you have to specify the issue will be on this um, attachment side while we are specifying the subnet and availability zone. That is one. So transit gateway works on the ENI things. Okay. So that is one thing. And on the previous videos, we discussed about like if we have multiple VPCs, they can able to communicate respectively like vpc a can communicate with c and c and vice versa and respectively b can c we can all can communicate with each other okay so one thing we can restrict it so you may say instead of this 10.0.0 .0 slash 8 if i will only specify 10.0.0 .0, sorry 10.1.0 slash 16 it means only i have route to this it means though it is wide open on the transit gateway route table, I can restrict on my route table, on my local route table, right? On the EC2 instance route table. So that what will happen if instead of 10.0.0.0/8, I did not add, I will remove and I will add only 10.1.0.0/16. Okay. So when I try to communicate telnet. 10.2.0.13. Let's understand this EC2 instance IP will be 10.2.0.13. Let's assume. Okay. So when we tried 10.2.0, so what will happen? This request will go to this route table and it will verify there will be no route to the 10.2. So it will be blocked here. So the communication is not going to happen. Okay. So that will satisfy. But think the conditions. Okay. Conditions in let's say it is a control tower based architecture like if you have seven number of accounts and the network administrator managing this transit gateway and other users are managing this vpc like the shared vpcs now if the network administrator made wide open here okay and uh, how he will get to know that uh, so now it is wide open here it means Anyone can communicate, all these VPC can communicate with each other. We can restrict on this, but this is managed by the other person's right? So this network administrator, he is not sure either the specific route because he doesn't have any control on this route table. The, because this route table control should be have the VPC A, okay? And who is managing that? This guy doesn't have any control. So so he he will not understand or he will not get to know whether the people they're accessing to the other vpcs or not because these things is possible but this is on the static route table so we are not sure so this guy will be not not sure that whether the communication so this is not a good approach so is there any approach you can restrict on this transit gate because this is centralized if you are going to restrict it, we have to restrict from this side, this route table side. So, okay. So now how to do that? 
So our approach is this VPC A should communicate with this VPC B, but VPC A, it should not communicate with VPC C. That is our requirement. Okay. One thing we understand we can do from a local route table, but that is not feasible. That is not the best practices. It, uh, it is not, it is possible, but it is not the best practices. Okay. Then how we can do that? If you see this diagram, okay. Okay, so now the same thing and the transit gateway, let me little, okay. Now this is the transit gateway. So instead of the default route table, this time we are going to create the static route table. Okay, it means while we are creating the transit gateway, we do not have to select that default route gateway associations and default route gateway propagations. So we do not have to select that. It means when the transit gateway will be created, it is not going to create any route table. Okay, so now we are good. We have created the transit gateway, simple transit gateway. Okay, and we have created the associations like EC2A, sorry, VPCA association, sorry, attachment, right? VPCA attachment, VPCB attachment, and VPCC attachment. We have created the attachment. Okay, but as there is no route table, so there will be no association, there will be no propagation is going to happen. Okay that is not dynamic. Now this time we are going to create the static route table just like in VPC. On the VPC we have a route table automatically it will create it. So now we are going to restrict more. So what we are doing we are, we are creating the custom route table on that VPC right. Like that we are going to create the static or custom route table on the transit gateway. So now what I did or what we do like I have created one transit gateway route table called transit RTA something route table A and on this route table I manually associated only the 10.1.0.0 like this VPC slider slash 16 okay I did not add this one fine so now how the communications will happen so I only added the 10.1 so now when this person okay it log into this EC2 instance from here he is trying to access telnet this ip 10.1.0.13 and on 22 port he is trying to access it okay when he will take what will happen the request and then i did not mean i made any changes on this okay it will open wide open 10.0.0.0/8 everywhere routable wide open so now when this the person from ec2a wants to access the server which is present in vpc b so the request will go to his local route table okay from this local route table it will see it's just see the pink line okay the request will go to his local route table and verify does that 10.1 series belong to this yes because this is the superset and this is a subset so it's belong so now it will pass okay then it will show the target where to go to the transit gateway. Then it will finally reach to the transit gateway route table. Okay, this route. Why it will reach the RTA? Why it will not reach to RTB? Because this route table has the attachment EC to A, and this route table has the attachment EC to EC to B. Okay. Now it will come to the route table A, and from this route table it will verify this 10.1 does that IP is added on your route it will see yes it is added so where at it via attachment b so from here it will come to the attachment b and finally able to access the server okay so see this pink line so i can able to communicate now my requirement is there is a ec2c machine okay so it's it is in bpcc which is 10.2.0.16 range okay so now the person from this ec2a he will hit the request telnet 10.2.0.16 and on, on port 22. Okay. So he will try to access it. Once this initiated, anyway, it will go to the local route table and it's from local route table to verify. Okay. There is a wide open network 10.0.0.18. It, it means it is allowed from here and towards destinations transit gateway. So from here it will pass and it will come to the transit gateway. Once it is reached to the transit gateway and transit gateway, it will check on his route table. So upon checking on this route table, you see there is no route to 10.2. So it will drop the request here only. So it will not go further. On that, we can restrict the access. Okay. So now this person, it is wide open. If he is open 0 0.02 transit gate, also nothing is going to work because I restricted the network administrators are restricted on the transit gateway route table itself. But earlier, what we thought, what we said, like 
we can maintain from the static routes. So that is also going to work, but that is not uh, like someone made the changes in the route. Again, it will going to work or again, they can communicate with other network. Okay. So like this way, we can restrict it. Okay. This is not wide open. This is not full mesh architecture, but in here, it is a full mesh architecture means anyone can communicate with each other. But when you compare, this is easy to use as it is dynamic routing, it is automatically associated and propagated. And when you share this transit gateway with other account, when they are automatically the route will be added. So it is easy to use and manage. But in this case, it is a little bit difficult, difficult to manage because uh, it, it is in, if it is in the same account, that is okay. We can know, we know the IP range and we can do that. But when the account will be in the different, like on the uh, landing zone architecture, if you have multiple accounts and the transit gateway is shared in other account and while they're creating the attachment, we do not know the IP ranges of there. So we need to understand their IP range and into add so it will be a little bit complicated but it will be more secure if the customer wants the secure manner and very very secure things then we can update or we can go ahead with these steps okay but anyway the first step also people are following and we are also follow to the customer so we can use that as well okay so that is all about the architecture when transit gateway is there at the all connected devices how they can communicate and and if i want to restrict the access between the vpcs and generally if it is a day vpcs and fraud vpc then i can follow these steps okay so now so we understood today while we created the transit gateway it is nothing but just like an interface endpoint it is going to create the network interface and only on particular availability zone we can select only one subnet so one subnet when you created one subnet right on that availability zone it is going to create one elastic network interface okay so that on that particular availability zone if you have multiple subnet so they can communicate via that eni towards the transit gateway okay but uh, the problem can come like if you by mistake did not select an other availability zone and uh, the resources are present on that availability zone, then the, there will not be any communications and that will not go via the transit gateway. So uh, when we are creating, we have to be uh, very, very sure that we have selected all these availability zones where our resources will be present. Okay, then after that, we understand about how the transit gateway static route table will be created and how we have to create the routes. Okay, and we have to create the routes. Okay, so that's it all about today. Then uh, please practice it. Okay, anyway, we are going to show the demo. Anyway, the earlier we already showed the demo, but the same approach what I discussed today, I am going to show the demo. So now this time I'm just making you guys understand theoretically. So once you have like, uh, ample amount of understanding how the communication is happening through diagrammatically, same thing as it is, we will showcase a demo and we'll understand in all detail. Okay, so that's it all about today. You practice it if you have any questions update in the comments and i will review it and i will update that and next videos we'll discuss more about the transit gateway other features okay thank you for watching my videos thank you